Hi everybody, it's Marissa, and I wanted to share with you an idea that I came up with for um, as a DIY alternative to the Tim Holtz Mini Ink Blending Tool. Now, as much as I, lo I love Tim Holtz stuff, and I love the idea, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't ha think it was awesome. My only problem was that I just finished doing all of this with all of my distress inks, and I was so proud of myself, and I know there are tons of people who had that done already, but... I just feel like I'm always a little bit behind because I, I don't really want to go and buy out, buy everything brand new all of a sudden as soon as it's out, you know, um, so I was kind of slowly doing it and I had just finished up and I was so proud of myself. So anyway, um, I was watching Jennifer McGuire's channel and several videos back she had started talking about the mini ink blending tool and it does, it's amazing. I just love how you can get into nooks and crannies a little bit better. The blending is, uh, you can focus more on a smaller area, um, and that nice rounded look that you get instead of kind of that more rectangular look. And I don't think the old blending tool is bad, but I really do like the design for the new tool. Um, I don't have one yet. However, I'm pretty sure that that ink blending tool is a one inch circle, foam circle. And so I was thinking to myself how I could you know, come up with that kind of thing that it will work nicely for me. Now, for those of you who already have your um, blending um, foams, I just found my Sizzix die. This is um, circles number two, and there is a one inch circle on here. And so I decided to give it a try to see if I could go ahead and cut out those circles and see if it would you know, if they cut nicely, and then again, if I could manipulate them so they would be a nice blending tool and, um, you know, save me a little bit of money in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did, and hopefully this will save some of you, because I imagine you can use, you know, the Sizzix die, you can use any wafer die, um, you know, like Spellbinders. Um, there's so many dies out there now that I, I can't imagine not being able to find something in your crafting stash if you love dyes that um, you could uh, find something in your stash to kind of cut this with. So the way I did it is, um, these are kind of my beat up plates right here. Um, and I just used, I have the long ones as well. And I also have a Fiskars fuse, but this is the easier one to get on my desk. So um, I'll go ahead and take the die. And for the cuddle bug, all you need for a Sizzix die is, um, see if I can adjust the light here a little bit. All you need are two B plates. Now I'm going to go ahead. Um, what I did was to put it face down because I wanted to make sure that this side was nice and clean. It was a very clean cut because if you have any stragglers, you know, things off to the side that didn't cut well, then you're not going to get a good blend. And I'm also going to place it um, with plenty of room left on the edge. So if I have foam left over, I could use it as a little, you know, fingertip blending tool or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there. Okay. And the nice thing is because it is foam, it squishes down and you cut through all the layers. And let me go ahead and pull this out. Okay, so this is what you end up with. And this is a one inch circle, which I believe is what Tim Holtz is marketing. And what's nice is when you're done, you actually have this left over. So I could just go ahead and take my scissors and um, cut down, I'm doing this off camera. I need my Tim Holtz scissors to do this, but my Tim Holtz scissors actually, I know this is crazy, but they secure my camera down while I'm doing stuff. But here you've got a little extra piece of foam and I'll um, clean that off. So you end up with not only your blending tool foam, but you also end up with a little extra if it's something you want to do, you know, on a piece of paper, or, you know, just a little thing like that. So anyway, um, we're going to see how that works on a piece of paper. and. What I just have is the Nina Solar White cardstock that I picked up from um, Target. So it's not the really, really thick Nina White, but it gives you the same idea. And I'm using a Heidi Swap die. 
And I already taped this down earlier because I was playing around with a little bit. I didn't want to get on camera and not be able to do it. <laughs> kind of make a fool of myself. So anyway, um, I'm going to start off with um, um, some shaded lilac. And I'm positioning it right in the center. Um, I did it off to the side, and I just didn't feel like I had as much control over it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my ink. And then just that nice circular motion. So I hope this saves you some money. I mean, it's not going to necessarily probably save you time, but um, I mean, it doesn't take that long to peel them off, die cut them, and put them back on. Now I've got a little bit of peacock feather here, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of a little bit off to the sides here, see what we come up with. And I think probably what I will do is purchase the round tool because I'm imagining you probably do have more control with it than you would with um, the rectangular tool. But I can't imagine that it's going to be, I mean, how is that going to change what you just did, um, cutting that off? So here's this. And it looks good to me. I mean, I think that it did a really nice job. And um, so I hope my little DIY um, will inspire some of you and help save you a little bit of money. I know the packages aren't that expensive, um, but I just, then what do you do with all those ink blending tools that you've already got inked up, you've already got them a little stained because you've already used them for some projects. Um, but um, anyway, I hope that was helpful to you, and um, I hope some of you can use it that way. Thanks. Bye.